Welcome to your writing tutorial. This tutorial will help you write a paragraph response to a prompt from any discipline, math, science, social studies, English, and more. As you watch, feel free to pause to take notes, rewind to understand important details, and look at your assignment and writing as you attend to the example in the video. Ready? Let's go. Today we will explore cause and effect writing. This is the fourth video on this writing topic. If you have not seen the first videos, you may wish to review them. Let's take a look at the writing task. In cause and effect writing, you may be asked to discuss a single effect. You may be asked to discuss a chain, a single cause, or a chain of causes. Basically, the cause and effect relationship breaks down into two distinct categories. The first is a simple cause and effect relationship, basically a one-to-one. -one. This means that one cause leads to one effect and you would only discuss two important details at most. This simple task is relatively rare in writing paragraphs. Your teacher usually wants you to explore a more complex relationship, such as the one we're discussing today. We are discussing a causal chain of several links. One cause leads to one effect, which leads to another effect, which leads to an ultimate effect. In our discussion today, we will be looking at writing prompts that ask the writer to discuss causal chains, a chain of effects from one to the next, leading to an ultimate effect. This first writing prompt comes from a seventh grade science writing. It is not a reflection on a lab. Rather, it discusses a concept that the student is learning. Let's read it. Discuss how thermal energy is transferred when making a pan of water boil before cooking spaghetti noodles. Make sure to use the terms radiation, conduction, and convection when describing the process. Explain where the initial energy comes from and how it is transferred. Of course, first you must read and size up the writing prompt. We note that this is a cause and effect writing prompt, asking how a certain effect, the boiling of water, occurs. The teacher has given clues about the process of causal chain that leads to that effect of water boiling. The clues are the terms radiation, conduction, and convection. So the teacher has fairly clearly identified the steps of the causal chain for the student. We can use all of these clues to write an effective answer. Let's take a look at a student response. When water is boiled to cook the spaghetti noodles, conduction, radiation, and convection. First, radiation occurs when the flame heats the pot. The flame is so hot, it heats the metal pot. Secondly, conduction from the flame heats the pot. The pot heats the water and makes it boil. Lastly, the water from the hot pot heats the noodles. The hot water makes the noodles soft and cooked. We will ignore the scientific accuracy of this paragraph for the moment. For this video, we are only looking at the writing competence. So let's check it out piece by piece. Our first stop is the topic sentence. This student has written, when water is boiled to cook the spaghetti noodles, conduction, radiation, and convection. I think the student simply didn't reread and notice that that first sentence is incomplete. So let's complete it for her. When water is boiled to cook the spaghetti noodles, conduction, radiation, and convection cause the boiling. What must we do with a topic sentence? If you've watched previous videos, do you know that a topic sentence in prompt-based paragraphs will always accomplish two tasks? First, it will restate the prompt. Has this restated the prompt? When water is boiled to cook the spaghetti noodles, and so on. It looks as though language from the prompt has entered into the topic sentence. Water is boiling to cook spaghetti noodles. The teacher understands that the writer is focusing on the prompt itself and not being distracted. So, yes, the writer has restated the prompt. But has the writer answered the prompt? When water is boiled to cook the spaghetti noodles, conduction, radiation, convection cause the boiling. How do we know whether the writer has answered the prompt? Look at the prompt and try to determine what is being asked. In this prompt, the word how is key. Discuss how thermal energy is transferred when making a pan of water before, boil before cooking spaghetti noodles. The writer has answered that radiation, conduction, and convection cause this boiling. So, that is the answer. As we noted before, the teacher is helped by including the answer in the prompt. 
Our last question is whether or not this topic sentence indicates a clear cause and effect focus. It must include both the cause and the effect in the topic sentence, or it must make a specific reference to the process of the causal chain. Ignore that last bit. We'll take a look at a second prompt that will address it. But here we can see that the author has included the water boiling, and that is the effect. And the author has included the three steps of the causal chain that lead to that effect. So, quickly to review, the author has restated and answered the prompt. And by doing that, she has written a sentence that is a clear cause and effect sentence. This provides direction for the paragraph. The reader and teacher will understand where the paragraph is going. Let's take a look at the rest of it. When we consider the rest of the paragraph, we must ask about effective transitions and clear subjects. I include these two together because often they're related. A student that is using effective transitions is often using clear subjects. And a student that does not use clear subjects is often suffering from ineffective transitions. So let's look at them together. In the student answer, we can pull out the second sentence. First radiation occurs when the flame heats the pot. This sentence includes the word first, which is process transition. You may have watched a video on sequence writing. And process is a step-by-step -step type of sequence. That seems like it may not be relevant to cause and effect writing. However, this is where cause and effect writing starts to sound a little bit like process writing. If you are discussing a causal chain, effect to effect to effect, then you are essentially discussing process. This cause leads to this effect, leads to this effect, leads to this effect. And you can use the process transition language of first, second, then, next, and last to describe the causal chain. The author has done this, first, secondly, lastly. She very clearly identifies the three steps of the causal chain, conduction, radiation, and convection. So the process transition language is effective for describing her causal chain. What about clear subjects? Radiation seems to be a specific subject. It is a concept under discussion in the scientific class. She does this for two of the three sentences. First, radiation. Secondly, conduction. Lastly, the water. We can see that she has broken from her pattern with this last step of the causal chain. Instead of discussing the water, she should discuss convection. So, if the student wishes to keep the pattern intact, and make sure the paragraph has integrity, she will use the specific subject of convection with the last step of the causal chain. Let's take a look at another writing prompt. This one is a lab reflection. It asks the student to reflect on a pie plate lab. The pie plate lab was a static electricity lab where a pie plate was rubbed to gain static electricity and then a spark was seen moving from the pie plate to the finger. Explain the observations you made each time you touched the plate and why those events happened. Include in your explanation the role your hand played when it touched the plate. Let's look at a student answer. When I performed the pie plate lab, there were many observations that I made. First, I observed that when I touched the pie plate, a small shock occurred. Secondly, when I rubbed the plate on my hair, the electrons transferred to the plate from my hair. The plate gained static electricity from friction when I rubbed it on my hair. Lastly, the positive charge on my finger was attracted to the negative charge on the pie plate, creating a spark. Those are the observations I made when performing the pie plate lab. Let's ask about the topic sentence. When I performed the pie plate lab, there were many observations that I made. This is unfortunately vague. Unlike the first student answer that we examined, this student answer suffers from using the word there. There were many observations that I made does not indicate the nature of the observations, the specific cause and effect process under discussion. In fact, using the word there is often an indication that you are writing a vague or ineffective sentence. Remove it from your writing. Until you can master using the word there to create effective sentences, simply avoid it. This student will be well served by not using the word there in his topic sentence. 
Let's look at the writing prompt to understand exactly what we must do. Explain the observations you made each time you touched the plate and why those events happened, including your explanation, the role your hand played when it touched the plate. Unlike the first prompt, this teacher has not indicated the answer or given any sort of clues to what should be discussed. If we look at the student answer, we can look at subsequent sentences and understand what our topic sentence may say. Remember, a topic sentence is supposed to provide an indication of what will happen in the paragraph. As we look through the paragraph, it seems that this writer is talking about static electricity. It seems that the lab explores static electricity. So let's use that term when we are phrasing our topic sentence. Instead of when I performed the pie plate lab, there were many observations that I made. Let's try, when I performed the pie plate lab, I observed the effects of static electricity. Earlier, I had talked about how you can write an effective cause and effect topic sentence. Instead of talking about cause and effect in this sentence, the writer refers to the causal chain. The causal chain is the process of static electricity. So, it seems to be specific. Does it restate the prompt? Does it answer the prompt? Yes, on both. Clearly, it indicates the causal chain in action during the lab. Let's look next at transition language. The author has used, just as the first author did, first, secondly, and lastly. These, again, are clear process words for transition. A quick note on this student example, though. This first sentence, I observed that when I touched the pie plate, a small shock occurred, is actually the last of the causal chain. The author has placed this out of order. And if you look at lastly, you'll see that the author has actually restated this. So even though the author is writing well in terms of transitions, the author may wish to pay attention to the repetition of the process. The author is also using strong subjects. Words like plate, charge, electrons are clear science terms that come into play during the lab. I've also indicated that the word I is a strong subject, which brings us to the question of voice. How do I know that I is an effective and appropriate subject to use in a paragraph? When should I use the first, second, or third person voice? In my writing tutorials sequence, I have included a video about determining voice. A quick answer to the first, second, third person voice question is to look at the prompt and understand whether it asks about you, or the reader, or just the concepts under discussion. In our first prompt today, we focused only on concepts. Therefore, first and second person were not appropriate. Here, the teacher is asking the student to reflect on how they did when they performed the lab. Therefore, first person is appropriate. So you will notice that this paragraph uses first person voice, whereas the first paragraph did not. Both writers are effectively listening to the prompt and answering what the teacher wants them to answer with the appropriate voice. Let's review what we've learned today. First, in prompt-based writing, write a topic sentence that clearly restates and answers the prompt. Secondly, use process transition language to announce each step of the causal chain. This transition language can be simple and effective. Third, Use clear subjects referring to the events specifically. Refer to scientific terms or different objects within a lab. You can also use yourself as a subject if the prompt has asked for the first person voice. Finally, pay attention to the prompt for that voice cue. Realize when the prompt is asking for you to speak about yourself, about the reader, or just about the concepts under discussion. If you remember these points, you can write an effective prompt-based response for any subject.